Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at preparing for the upgrade to Mac OS Catalina. So Apple has released Catalina and I've waited a little bit to do the upgrade because there have been a number of issues with it for people uh, because there are some pretty major changes that are going on in this uh, particular upgrade. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this screencast is walk you through some of the considerations you need to make before you actually hit that Upgrade Now button and start the upgrade process, or you might be really disappointed on the other side. So one of the things that's really important to consider when you're doing the upgrade is to make sure that your apps are up to date. One of the major changes that's happening in Catalina is that it's moving away from 32-bit applications to 64-bit applications across the board. Uh, up to this point, Apple's combined the two. You can run 64-bit or 32-bit applications, but with this upgrade, all of your apps have to be 64-bit or they won't work at all. And so for some of you, this may be a deal breaker because you may have some legacy software that you're running that you might want to use for uh, your different workflows and things like that that is no longer going to function going forward in uh, Mac operating systems. So to check if you have any 32-bit applications so you can review them, there's a couple of ways to do that. Let me show you one of, the, uh, one of the ways you can do it right inside your operating system itself. If I just come up here to the Apple, and if I just hold down Option, you'll notice that About This Mac changes to System Information. So if I just click on System Information, I'll get a screen here that shows me all of my hardware information, but if I just scroll down here, you can see where it says Applications. And what it will do is it will load the different applications that I've got. It might take a little bit of time depending on how many apps you have in there. And so uh, let me let this run, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so there we go. And so what you can do with this is if I just expand it, let me just make it a little bit bigger here so that it fills my screen, because over here on the side, let me just pull this all the way in. You can see that it tells you if it's 64-bit or not. So you can see here that whatever this application is is not 64-bit. Neither are these right here. And so I can go through then and just check the applications that aren't uh, up to speed there to be able to be included in the update. And so you can see some stuff from Adobe there, and I could just scroll down and do it that way. So that's one way I could do it. Now I could also just sort by that as well. So all of the no's are at the top, and then I can see just at a glance all the different applications that are not going to work once I do the update. So that's one way to do it. Another way is with an application uh, called Go64. And so this is put up by St. Clair Software. And so if you wanted to go over to the St. Clair Software website, you could download this for free. Uh, they're the ones that make default folder X, so it's a good application. And so what I can do is scan uh, for 32-bit applications or also for all executables. So let me just say all executables and change that. And so now it's going to do a scan for me. And it's starting to retrieve my applications here. And you can see I get a status bar down here. And they'll start to show up here so that I can see which ones are not compatible. And you can see it just starts dropping them in there for me. And again, depending on how many applications you have, how many executables you have, I'm using that because I might have some uh, different terminal type applications that I use to run things or scripts. So it's going to go through and find all of those for me. And you can see there's a ton here uh, because I put all executables. You can just do applications as well. So we're going to go ahead and let that run, and it's just about done. But you can see all of the different things here just as I scroll that are no longer going to be working inside of uh, the new operating system upgrade. And you can see if I just scroll down, uh, there's a number of terminal uh, documents in there. A lot of that might not be a big deal to me, but for some of you that are uh, using that, it might be a big deal. But otherwise, those are the applications. So this is another way to check it out, and you can go and then uh, delete the applications or update them just to make sure that they're in good shape. So that's another way to do it. Let me just go ahead and put that down. Now, one of the other things you might want to do is go through uh, your actual uh, applications and operating system and do some cleanup. Uh, an application that works pretty good for that is Clean My Mac 10. And this is an application that will do a scan. And so if I just click scan here, I'm going to do a smart scan. And you can see it's going to look for things to clean up in my operating system. It'll do uh, some things for protection and for speed. And so I'm going to let that go ahead and run. And when it's done, I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. 
Okay, so now the scan is done, and as you can see, it's found a, a bunch of things that I can clean up here. My protection's okay. There's some speed improvements I can make. Uh, I'm not going to go into the application too much in depth, but what I could do is I could review the details here just to see what it's found. And you can see it's found a number of a user uh, cache files, some language files, system log files. I could go through and clean uh, all of this stuff up. One of the things I would say that I haven't had a chance to review in depth yet is the photo junk part of it. Uh, I am going to do some testing on that and I can let you know in a future screencast how that works. So I may not remove the photo junk or the photo information in here inside the uh, cache files. And so all you could do is uncheck the things you don't want. But this would be one way for you to clean out the system junk before you do an install. We'll go ahead and go back to the summary. Uh, the other thing that's included in here, if I scroll down, is there is an uninstaller included in the application. And so if I come in here, one of the nice things is it does show me my 32-bit applications here as well. And I can go through and choose which one of these to uninstall. So uh, again, it's, this is a nice one-stop application for it. It is a paid-for version, though, uh, so you can use some of the free options. But just wanted to show you that that's in here as well as another option for you as you're looking to clean up your Mac. Now one more thing you're going to want to do before you hit that Upgrade Now button is to make sure that you have a good backup. And so one of the backups that you'll want to have is a clone of your setup so that that way if anything goes wrong you can just restore from that clone and everything is put back where it was before. One of my favorite applications for that is SuperDuper and so let me go ahead and pull that up here. And SuperDuper, you can download it and use it for free to create a clone. If you wanted to do any kind of scheduling to keep that going in the future, you'd have to pay for it. Uh, but otherwise, this is a really good application for that. Uh, all you do is pick your main Macintosh hard drive here, and then you would go and select a drive that you attach to copy to, and then it'll go through the process of creating a clone. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm not going to show you how that works, uh, but just wanted you to know that that's an option that's available to you and something that you need to consider. You could also do a time machine backup as an extra backup for your files so that you have that and then once you have all that set and ready to go you should be uh, ready to do the upgrade to Catalina. So again those are just some steps that I like to take before I do an upgrade just to make sure that everything is uh, taken care of just in case something goes wrong because these things don't always go smoothly. Generally they do but they, there are times when things can happen. So what I'm going to do is in a future screencast, I'll show you how to do an upgrade and I'll probably even look at doing a clean install as well just so that you can get all of the pieces. And then we'll go into detail into the changes that are available in the Catalina upgrade. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.